Today, we're talking about customer service for small to medium-sized companies. As usual, we're tackling business problems related to business growth and what people need to do. All right, so we'll be together for around 30 minutes. We're tackling very specific aspects related to uh, customer support. And uh, for next week, we're talking about the startup myth, startup myths revealed. So I'll be tackling about what are the, the myths the lies that are rampant in the ecosystem of startups, and uh, what you what what of them are true, what of them not so much. Now, what are the key aspects of uh, any startup uh, or small to medium sized business? Is the founder or senior leadership need to be super involved in the customer complaints and inquiries? Because the users will tell you what they will buy what they don't want to buy, the problems they have their existing products. So if the senior management and the founders are on the front line of the problems, they will be able to change their business gradually over the years in order to create better products and services from the beginning because they know the common complaints and the common problems. They'll be able to identify what can be done operationally inside of the business to be preemptive so that to avoid customer support problems, we, we, we solve the problem, we stand in the way of the problem happening in the beginning. That can be only done if the senior management and founders are involved. Um, and another key aspect related to, especially now in COVID, where it's business is difficult to get, new business is difficult to get, and a lot of businesses are in flux. So retaining existing customer base that you have is a tactic of growth for you as well. So I know going out to get customers may or may not be easy for you now at this point, but if you're able to maintain the existing customer base, that's also a tactic of growth where you're able to maintain 70, 80% of your existing customer base while acquiring new customers, but you know that your base is there. And there are so many businesses out there, so many of us who do similar things. How we execute is our differentiator. So customer support is a differentiating aspect from an execution perspective. So people would know that if I deal with your company and a problem arises like any other company, any other service or product, I know that it will be quickly, uh, one, I'll be listened to, and two, it will be quickly addressed. A common question I get from business owners is, do we insource or do we outsource? So let's talk about, uh, about the outsourcing part. So the outsourcing part, um, the reason it's appealing to many is it's easier and faster. Like today, you'll be able to have a team of three or four uh, who are able to speak a specific language to tackle a certain product, and you can do it quickly. For you to be able to make the outsourcing work for you, so it's not as many founders have thought where I just you know, contract an outsourcing company, they give me some resources and I'm done. They, they bring in their experience to help me. It's not the case. You have to bring in your experience to these staff because these staff are people who are ready to handle customer support part. They have some tools, but they need from you the business process, how you want to handle the tools, who they escalate to, what are things they're authorized to action on from their side, what are things that they, they need to escalate. After they escalate to you and you solve it, how do you, how do you bring it back to them? Um, are they authorized to make refunds or not? So all of this is about business process, and for that you look at different scenarios and different scripts. So there's a lot of preparation work that you need to do before you're able to successfully outsource. And I suggest you have uh, 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 resources, uh, sets of resources from your side, have a few in-house employees from your side to train the outsource team. And then I would also have members of your team audit voice recordings and responses. So this way you'll be keeping a very close eye on their activity and what they're doing. And you'd look at weekly customer support KPIs. Customer support KPIs identify how many incoming cases, how many of those were resolved during the first touch. So the first over the phone, first call, first chat, first email, how you're able to resolve that issue on the first touch. Um, time it takes to resolve the issue. What are the top categories that are coming in for you to solve? you'll need to guide them, not the other way around. Don't think if you outsource it to them, you need to guide, they'll guide you. And then since you're doing all of this effort of preparing and doing this, wouldn't it make more sense for you to insource this? Because anyway, the business process comes from you, the scripting comes from you, the content, the escalation is, is you, the auditing for quality control 
comes from you. So, so the step is having a few members of a few new members of your team able to address this. This way, you have full control, full insight on everything that's happening. Uh, you might struggle a little bit with the tools you need to set it up in terms of communication and chat and telephony and things like this, and reporting, trouble ticketing systems, and so on. Uh, but you'll have full control. So with the uh, with some of the customers that I've advised who have insourced their customer support, they have full control, they have full visibility, they know what are their current problems. They look at them every day, they discuss them with all of the different departments, no matter how big the company is, 200, 300 thousands of employees, we have that information inside the company, we, uh, we escalate to the different departments, you're able to do all of this with your full control uh, internally, and you're able to change your business to better accommodate the requirements of the users. When you create new services, you're able to factor that in, uh, in mind. When you are doing changes internally within the company, you know that this will affect, positively uh, uh, affect or negatively uh, uh, affect uh, uh, the user interacting with your product or service. So once you have this internally, uh, you'll be able to have much better control. If you're in a hurry, you might want to outsource it a little bit in the beginning, but it's inevitable for you to, to bring it back in depending on your size and scale. Uh, I want to share with you a little bit from my experience in building some of this for one of our customers. They have operations in Saudi, UAE, Lebanon, uh, and a few other uh, Arab countries as well. And they had the experience of outsourcing it in the beginning because they wanted to, they wanted to focus on their business. And then once their business was stable and solid, that's when they did an investigation to bring it back in, and my team and I worked with them to help them insource this. So one of the key learnings that I wanted to share with you from their experience uh, themselves as a business and from uh, our experience bringing that in for them is, um, in the beginning, it was a tick of the box. So I want to outsource this. My customer support is a tick of the box. Somebody's handling it for me, and then, it, then that's fine. But once the business stabilized and they started to audit, so looking at random chat messages, looking at random uh, social media support messages, looking at random call messages and so on, they used to see, and this is very common where there's a disconnect between somebody who doesn't work for your company and if you have it outsourced to somebody. So there's a disconnect between what you do and how they handle it. There's an issue of quality control as well because members of your team need to do the quality control and retrain staff. Um, and also you need to uh, usually also outsource companies of customer support, they tend to have a high turnover rate. And yes, they have their own internal retrainings, but that also needs your involvement and you, your, your eye on this. Um, one aspect as well that I strongly recommend you do is the business process before the tools. So um, what some of my customers do is, is they buy a tool, a software tool for customer support, that tickets, uh, uh, Zendesk and other, other trouble, trouble ticketing tools. And they think that when they plug it into their company, it will work out. It's the opposite way where first you draw the business process. Um, if you're doing this uh, in your business now, reach out to me on Instagram. I'll share with you some of the business process that, that, that I've drawn. Uh, it might help you as you plan and structure your own. So the business process means we have a certain scenario of, for example, billing. If there's a billing problem where somebody bought a service but was not reflected in their wallet or in their app or, or in their service. So that, there's a flow for that. If there are other cases of a refund, there's another flow for that. Another case for somebody who's unable to sign up to your app uh, they're unable to sign up, unable to sign in. What, what, uh, what's the issue there? Uh, also for, uh, so each, these are different scenarios. In every scenario, you look at who are the people who would handle what? What will I escalate? What will I escalate? What, what do I need to finish at, at a certain, certain level? And then uh, with time as this grows, you see the reason I'm bringing up the manpower aspect is what the customer did was in the beginning, is as they grew, they just added more people because it's the fastest, because you're growing fast, it's the fastest way to take care of things before tech kicks in. Bring in the more people and I'll solve this. And then you, the, you realize that as your business is growing, your support costs are also increasing tremendously. And that's when 
you would do a phase two of your insourcing of handling customer support, where you're looking at how can I have the same customer base? Uh, no, how can I have the same number of employees handling my customer support? As my customer base grows, how can the same amount of people, and a little bit more, maybe a small percentage increase, cater to more people, to more customers of mine? And that is done by having the right tools in place for managing scenarios and situations and cases, by having the business process very detailed and clear about what are the business scenarios, uh, sign up, billing, uh, 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 transfer funds, uh, uh, a problem that, that happened in the execution and so on. Once you have all of those, that visibility there, and the training and standardizing your responses and how you can solve this. Uh, and, and you're able to also unlock ways, places where you had to escalate many of the cases. You, you can authorize some of the uh, lower level support people to actually make the decision on their, uh, uh, on their level to approve or disapprove certain topics. That will allow you to, to grow the business. The chatbot. Now, the chatbot is a very common misconception that I have, uh, what I see with small to, to, to mid-sized businesses. Tell me, I'm on chatbot, we need the chatbot, it's important, the world is AI, and blah, blah, blah. You don't need the chatbot until you have hundreds of daily inquiries that you cannot service. Not 100, I'm saying hundreds. So many businesses, they go into chatbots, and, and they, can cater, they can take care of this with a few people. Only when you have hundreds and hundreds of daily inquiries, a lot of them are recurring, you have so many issues and you don't want to pay more money to hire more people to, to scale, you want to use technology for this. Yes, the chatbot makes sense. But first, you need to have that number of daily inquiries. Second, your existing team needs to be super, super overwhelmed on, on what, they, uh, what they can or can do. And then you also have uh, a detailed map or tree of how you, wanna, uh, how you want the chatbot to address things. So all of that detailed requirements will not come from the technology provider of the chatbot that wants to come to you for, come from you as a business, where you would draw all of these elements of saying, if I get these types of questions, these are the trees, if the user responds this way, that's how, that's how it responds and so on. And then you would need to include at what point would the messages go to a customer support representative, a human. And, that, and you do this only after you get all of the information you need so you can better troubleshoot. And then also after the chatbot is live, you're going to need to really continue to review the chatbot to see how effective it is to optimize it because it's not a plug and play sort of thing, no matter what the chatbot vendor tells you. Another technology-based aspect is you have so many channels, calls, emails, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, website, whatever it is. You can need to look at hopefully one tool that is able to gather all of these different channels, excuse me, all these different channels in one, in one system because you need visibility. To go back to the case of the customer that I had is they had some channels that are poorly addressed, like Twitter, it was not addressed as fast as Instagram, the way they were structured internally. And there were cases on email that, 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 that went unanswered. So if you bring them all in a tool, uh, you'll be able to better address it. You will have to have much more visibility on who's available, who's responding, what are the response rates, how do I need to change my schedules? That process flow will definitely, definitely help you accommodate the multiple channels. So the tool is important, but it comes later. So first business process, then the tool, and then the team. So uh, what people do is, is they, they go with people, and then they tool, and then the business process. My recommendation is, is, is the opposite. You do the business process first, then you look at the tool, and then you get the people to use the tool. And when customer support, especially with a small business, start small. Even as you grow, keep your customer support units small. So have these teams of two to four people in a team with a manager and a senior manager. So that's a unit, like a cell. This way, when you grow, you just duplicate these cells. So you'd have, the cell is basically, uh, it's basically a manager, it's, it's this. So this is one cell. So when you have new people, you bring them in here. So let's say you start with two people and a manager. And then you bring in, a, as you grow, you bring in a third person, then a fourth. And then as, as this flows here, then you'd have another separate team that has its own manager and one or two people. And then you add the third and fourth. So these are the cells. And you have a senior manager on top of all of the, these teams. 
once you have these cells structured like this, you have much more visibility on uh, the problems. You have, uh, you're able to address problems early on. You're able to improve the capabilities of each uh, of the customer support representatives or changing them if they're not performing well. So that aspect early on is definitely, definitely helpful and you'll be able to do this early on as you grow. And one thing also to, to point out is that billing, billing tends to be a much longer process that your team here cannot necessarily address quickly. So in the cases of billing, what I would suggest you do depending on the size of your company is to have like a, in the billing department, a billing person who's able to address the customer support cases. So they're able to respond quicker and so on because usually billing means you have to go back into backend systems. You have to, you have to look at payment providers like your credit card or your bank. You have to follow up on things. So that usually involves third party. It's a process. So with that, add to that a human dealing internally in your company. So it's, it becomes a very big deal uh, from a customer response perspective. So what I suggest is within your billing department to have somebody who is able to uh, address things uh, quicker than others. One of my customers, what I liked about their approach, the founder was very clear saying, look, I want to uh, fix the problem before it happens. This is one. Two, if it happens, I want to proactively tell the customer that it happened, even before the customer comes to us to complain. Tell them it happened, and this is what we're going to do to solve it. That is something you can only do. That's a fundamental shift in how the business is run, but that's something how you can only do after you've run your own customer support internally for, for a while, you know all of the cases, all of the issues, and then you say, okay, I want to restructure my business to better service my customer. Because the customers will stay with you if there are a few problems, not many, if there are a few problems. And then, so, so why would they want to go somewhere else? A lot of them also don't want to save five dirhams or 10 dirhams here just to suffer with the service. They'd rather pay that. And keep the service running. Um, also, if the if the problem happens before and we find it and we have a solution, we tell you about it. This way, the customer trusts us much more, saying that one, we're not hiding; two, we're coming out and saying, "Look, this is the problem." Three, this is the solution. So you know that you are in a safe position. So that's something definitely that helps. There's also something related to the FAQs. I've seen teams who work on hundreds of FAQs to respond to customers, but when we really look into them. But actually down to five, to five to seven most common questions. So the, these are the most common questions, FAQs that you have, rather than 50 or 100. So if you, if you pay close attention to these questions, you're able to, you're able to uh, reduce the number, you're able to focus on the five to seven that make the most sense that, that, need, that need work. And also what I recommend you do is find ways to group answers. So basically, you know that with question number three, they usually ask about this, and then sometimes they follow up with that. From the beginning, when you answer the question the first time, answer the main question, and also include more information to avoid an unnecessary follow-up. This also increases the number of first-touch resolutions. And also keep in mind that the company websites, no matter how detailed it is, how, how, uh, how thorough, um, people will still ask you questions on social or on your email customer support. They don't go through your whole catalog. They might not see the videos on YouTube that, you, that you've already answered to. So what you see that you have a lot of your team members, they just go to the website or they, they copy the link or they go to YouTube to get their support video and they copy the link and they, and they put that there. Um, so that, uh, 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 just keep that in mind. Don't be frustrated and don't expect that the customers will go ahead and do that. Um, Anytime you have any questions about customer support, please feel free to ask me now or reach out to me later on on, on Instagram. So if I want to if I want to uh, uh, provide uh, a summary on the important aspects here, is first focus on the business process, not the tool, not the people. Business process meaning what are the business scenarios that you need to solve. So business scenario one is about billing, uh, making a payment. Business scenario two is about refund. Business scenario three is about difficulties signing up. The scenario four is I tried to make a booking and I could not. So those are business scenarios. And every scenario you have, what are the common troubleshooting questions? And then if we need to escalate, who does it go to? And then and what are the response times? How do we track this and so on? So that's the business process first. 
The second, the tool, like sort of ticketing systems, um, things related to uh, how you can keep track of, uh, of, the, of the aspects related to um, what are the cases, how frequently are they coming in, and so on. So that's an aspect. A third aspect is if you, can, if you have full control of the customer support aspect, you're able to restructure your business so that you are preemptive about this so that before it happens, you're able to solve it if you have that intention to do so. And uh, after you have this process, you do the tools. After the tools, you get the people. And with the people, keep, the, keep them as in cells. So a cell of having a manager with two to four people we have, uh, you know, uh, reported to him or her, and then you have two, three, four, five, six cells as you scale and grow. So no matter what questions you have, uh, uh, let me know. Uh, uh, reach out to me on Instagram. Let me know. I'm happy, happy to answer your questions. And uh, best of luck trying to identify how best to solve your customer support cases. And uh, thank you for joining me today. Every week, I'm talking about business problems for small to medium enterprises. So anytime you have a question or an issue, you let me know. Thank you for joining.